Uh, Your Excellency, thank you so much for the wonderful uh, insights that you provide us. Um, from your perspective, how can the Philippines entice more foreign investors uh, given the fact that we have a very high cost of electricity? In fact, we're top 10 in the world. I guess it, it was mentioned already during the seminar that if it's, I start with the government side, it takes the right kind of legislation, what I call the legislative framework. And I think in the Philippines, the government has taken uh, great steps recently here in terms of uh, stating that renewables that they uh, open to total foreign ownership. So that's an important signal from the government. That, that's very important. There are other issues, obviously, in the kind of framework conditions that the government can uh, create. Uh, one is what we call as you know, red tape to make it uh, bureaucracy-wise easier for foreign companies and foreign enterprises to enter the market. Uh, so I guess I mean these are good omens from the current Philippine administration, and, and now it's. Uh, as I many times say to Finnish business, it's, it's for them to make their homework, you know, get, in, uh, get, get to explore the Philippine market, get their facts straight, and then come here to have a look themselves. One thing that from the embassy side, what we do is obviously we factually report back to Finland and to Finnish business uh, uh, sphere about the conditions here. But as we know, obviously the businessmen themselves and women, they have to come here and have a look themselves and explore and, and you know, uh, make partnerships with local partners. So that's the way, framework conditions from the government and then the business to do their job homework and come here and, and make partnerships locally. Yeah, right now with the Public Service Act uh, already uh, a law, uh, how do you think we can capitalize on this, uh, especially in the in renewable energy? Because one one of the things that um, recently written by the former Supreme Court Justice uh, Artemio Panganiban that foreigners should really be allowed to take part in the renewable energy program. As I said, I mean that that's a good omen, and that's it's, that it's up to the implementation. First of all, that is the reality, the reality for the foreigners that they are able to enter the market. But again, I repeat that then, uh, like foreign foreign business, like country, like from Finland, from my country, they have to explore and get to know the Philippines, get to know the market, and it takes their whole work to be done as well. And that is something that we from the embassy side cannot do for the business. They have to do it themselves. And yeah. this is, as I, I repeat myself, this is what we do from the embassy side. We, we report about the Philippine market and, and we uh, invite, in a way, Finnish companies to explore and come here. So I, I think, again, it's, it's, uh, the prospects are good. So now it's about the implementation. Okay. Any message to the Filipino people and to our government officials, Your Excellency? As this is a Nordic Chamber event, so I want to spread the word about the Nordic story. And that came up already during the seminar. I mean, what we feel amongst the Nordic embassies here and ambassadors here in Manila is that the Nordic story deserves to be told again and more forcefully here. It's not only about, you know, the good business expertise technologies that we have in terms of green transition, for example, fight against climate change. But it, it's about the cooperation model that was mentioned. Cooperation between Nordic countries, uh, the societies and the principles on which our societies are built. So I, I hope that all of, all of people here in the Philippines <laughs> will hear more about this Nordic story from us in the future. It's a good story.